Welcome to another video, and this is going to be a fun one. So I am currently at AdeptCon, and this is one of my AdeptCon videos. Specifically, this is going to be a look at all of the crystal brush miniatures that are here in the painting competition, or at least many of them. Um, I took these photos around 5 p.m. today, which is Friday the 1st. Um, there was still a little bit of time where people could submit afterwards, and there were a couple of people who didn't get their miniatures up. So if you happen to be one of the people who submitted and you watch this and you don't see your mini, it is not because I didn't like it or left it out or something like that. It's just that they weren't all in the case. Some were being photographed. But this is a lot of them. And most important thing I want to say up top, 50% uh, of the vote for Adepticon's uh, Crystal Brush competition is based on user votes on coolminionot.com. Uh, so you can influence who goes home with the gold in each category. Um, I will post a link uh, down below to where you'll be able to go to, to vote. Uh, and I do highly recommend you go there, check it out, review the photos, make your voice heard, vote for the minis that you really love. The reality is so many artists did so much amazing work for this. This is the best year I have ever seen. The miniatures, the Really, a lot of them cross the line I, into just pure art, uh, are, are absolutely mind-bogglingly gorgeous. Um, and, and you'll see a lot of them here. Now, of course, these are taken with my phone through glass, so I kind of apologize in advance. Uh, but hit the link, go, review, vote, make your voice heard. Um, there's so many good miniatures. I, I just I want to see lots of uh, lots of people turn out and, and vote for this. Uh, you'll be able to vote. Uh, I believe the voting begins tomorrow and it's available basically all day tomorrow. Um, I don't remember the exact start and stop times. It might be 3 p.m. Eastern, I think, is when it goes live. So if you're watching this after 3 p.m. Eastern on April 2nd, then you can vote. And I think it goes through until early Sunday morning, something like that. Uh, at any rate, who cares about all this slide? Let's get into the miniatures. And um, I'm just going to kind of slide through this and keep talking. Uh, I am not going to offer critique or anything like that. I am occasionally going to talk about stuff that I think is absolutely stunning. Um, but I don't, it's not, it's not my place to, uh, to comment on these incredible artists' work. Right out, um, you see that... Uh, there's a lot of different types of miniatures here. Uh, obviously, there's all the categories are uh, you've got science fiction, historical, and uh, fantasy steampunk. That's one thing, fantasy steam, fantasy slash steampunk. Uh, and then you've got single figure, which is sort of small 28 mil uh, single, obviously one miniature. You've got large vehicle or monster, and in each of these, and you've got uh, a unit, so fantasy unit. Or fantasy steampunk unit, fantasy steampunk single miniature. So as I scan through these, you're going to see a lot of different types of miniatures, and that's one of the things that I think is truly amazing about this. Uh, you know, if you really, really want to stare at a miniature or zoom in, you'll want to pause because I'm going to vary the amount of time I'm on each of these. Um, but what's truly amazing is all of the incredible work, and like when you look at these pieces, it's evident that people spend days on their stuff. Um, the use of color in, in so many of these miniatures, the, the basing level that uh, the people are at, it's, it's all just extremely top-notch work. Um, and uh, so the, this is the, when I say it's the crystal brush competition, uh, understand the road to crystal brush is something that happens in the year leading Okay, so for a whole year beforehand, there's a bunch of different miniature competitions through Crystal Brush, which is sort of brought to you by Cool Mini or Not. And the winners of those get basically a ride here to compete with a new miniature. So uh, in addition, the top prize for this show is $10,000 for the best in show. So it's not surprising that competition is fierce and that the miniatures people put together for this are absolutely stunning um, and i'm sure you've seen many of them uh, as i'm scanning through here 
again, I'm not going to comment on many of these unless I see something or like there's a couple that really just blew my mind and I'll, I'll talk about why. Um, but I, I certainly have no right to critique anything here. But, uh, you know, looking at this as the case filled up Thursday and, uh, and, and today, uh, it was really an amazing process to watch all of these dedicated painters and hobbyists show up and bring their best. And, and that's what's here. Um, and talking to, to uh, Anne, and she had mentioned that the, you know, the Europeans had all come over, that the Americans all It's really just an amazing year for the competition. Um, when I look at a lot of these conversions, like, uh, hey, who doesn't love, uh, I don't know if that's a conversion or not, but who doesn't love Kung Fu Panda? Oh, that guy. Isn't that fun? Uh, but there's just so many. It's really incredible um, when you look at sort of the coloration on them and the way that they're playing with tone with the freehand. For example, the mini on the right there, notice the freehand on the dress. Uh, you know, just absolutely amazing stuff. Actually, I think I have a second picture of her just because that freehand is so delicate and gorgeous. When I look at all of these uh, miniatures, I'm just constantly impressed by all the different ranges, the different styles that people, uh, you know, paint in and bring to life. Uh, it's it's really truly impressive the work of the artists. And what I really want to talk about here a lot, uh, beyond the the categories that I mentioned of you know fantasy, historical, and steampunk, there are also three other categories. I guess three other categories. Uh, diorama, large, which is like 54 millimeter and above, and the chibi miniatures, which is in the chibi style. And I uh, all of the diorama uh, entries this year, it's clear that there's a huge competition in that. Uh, the, the people who are putting together these dioramas are at such a high level, and, and you'll see some of them if you scan through. Um, but I was also thrilled and you'll see some of those as we go through too um, because it's such a cool new style and completely different from anything I had seen for so many years coming up. You know, there was just sort of the standard fantasy and, and, and sci-fi miniatures and there was kind of one way to paint them and I didn't see so much variance in the, in the minis. And then the chibi just totally changed the game, you know, that fun anime sort of inspired cartoon style uh, just so much. It, it's got like a lightness to it, and and th that does not mean in any way that the miniatures are not painted amazingly. It still is just as hard, if not harder, to make that chibi look really, really good. Um, but just to be in a more fun style. Uh, so you can see just like the facing and terrain work there with the Monkey King, you know, stuff like that. Just really, really, truly impressive. Continue through here. Uh. As I mentioned with throughout all the categories, what this means is that you get a huge range of minis uh, in all sorts of different types. You know, there's some of the, some older minis, a lot of newer casts here, different boutique minis and stuff like that. It's certainly not all one manufacturer. In fact, it's all over the shop. Uh, but you've got some great unit work, stuff like this. Um, of just various people who, in, in both the, the fantasy and the sci-fi and the historical reign. What I'm so impressed with is, really, I think the historicals, which often feel kind of, from my perspective, and maybe it's just because I paint miniature, like fantasy and sci-fi so much, that I often, it doesn't feel like historicals get enough credit. I don't see them as much. I'm sure it's just I'm really not part of that unity is probably what it is. Um, but that being Really, really blew me away. And people who did just a real credit to the historical units they were trying to represent, to the quality and skill of their painting. Just absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, and and as I mentioned, so it's it's great to look at um, to look at all these different conversions. So, for example, the diorama here of the. Um, uh, Peter Pan, you know, like so much of that being conversion and creativity, uh, or even the fox and the hound, if you stop and zoom in down there on the left, just a lot of little things like that. Just 
people are just doing amazingly. The other fun thing that I saw a lot of this year that I've noticed really coming into its own in the past couple of years is stuff like this. You're going to see more of it pan through. Uh, more of the busts, you know, not just people doing the minis because for their game or something. Uh, although there's plenty of that too, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also fun to me to see the busts where it's, you know, people painting really for the joy experiment to push themselves. And when I look at all these miniatures that are in here, that's really exactly what I think. People really just pushing it to get up to an amazing level, searching out there, finding great sculpts, and just doing original creative stuff with it. Yeah, you can see there, like, there's, you know, sort of three busts right in a row. And, uh, you know, each they have them both in sort of the smaller, what I'll call like the 28 mil ones. And then you see there's plenty of 54 mil busts, you know, kind of differing sizes, but uh, all very fun stuff. The uh, And it's really funny, too, because so the miniature second from the right there of the woman with the werewolf. I was just turned on to this group weekend for the miniature two days ago, right before I came to Adepticon. And then I came here and saw it. And so I'm, I'm going to have to pick up some of those as well. Uh, I really love that range. I think it's gorgeous. More busts. As you can see, they're really, it really came out this year. So many busts are, are uh, have been, there's a lot of new sort of smaller or boutique companies that are doing these busts. And people are really taken to them because it gives you a chance to really push and play and, and, uh, and, and really up your game. Uh, in what would be a smaller project, right? Like if you painted that that uh, you know that full size Tywin Lannister, it would take you a long time and and be and and be a lot of the same technique over and over again because of the smaller area. You get to really, really, really push. But here you go, a lot, a lot, and just a lot of fun elements to to these. Um, and then I also really, really value that it's not like every one of these is deadly serious more lighthearted, right? There's some that are more sort of fun. There's some that are, are uh, just really kind of uh, almost comical, but in a great way. Uh, when we come to some of the chibi stuff, you'll see. Um, like, I, th I think the chibi lends itself to, I don't want to say like uh, a, a joke, but because it, it's not, that makes it sound like I'm downplaying the chibi style. I just mean it lends itself to kind of a light, uh, to to light narrative and storytelling with your uh, with your miniature. Yeah, just absolutely great stuff. There's so much as well. Uh, that's the other thing I really uh, was amazed by. By the time this closed, as I said, I I missed some because they were out getting photographed or they were still waiting to be loaded into the case and something like that. Just how many. There were, there were just so very many uh, miniatures uh, this this year. Just three cases, many shelves tall, and every one of them was just full. Uh, just all of these amazing submissions, and at most points in the day, when I would I kind of walk through the hall, I would see a line of people just waiting to submit their stuff. Nice, fun sort of chibi unit or, or diorama there on the left. Yeah, and as I like, I mentioned it here, you can see it again. Um, you know, cool historical stuff. Uh, sorry, not trying to go quick. I'm just also trying to think of additional things to say. Uh, oh, so let me transition to this. Um, because there are there are more pictures than I have words, <laughs> especially when I'm not I'm trying not to like talk about each miniature in detail. But what I will say is that, uh, you know, there there this is probably the World Series of painting competitions. Um, the reality here at Adepticon, I mean, honestly. The best in the world, or most of the best in the world, at this point. Okay, uh, because the nature of how this is a feeder, and because the nature of the prize and everything like that, 
this is the the best of the best. And what I would say is, at the same time, you shouldn't. If you've got painting, be there to learn. You know, you've got a different convention, anything like that. Okay. Go paint something up. Get the idea in your head that you're that you are painting it for a company know that do that right and and work on your model from the beginning as though it's going to be for a competition i think things can happen especially as many of us in our community often you know paint armies regularly or very large forces right is that we can sort of get to the point where it just becomes like you're trying to get to uh you're trying to just get things done, right? From taking something to the highest level of where you can take it, okay? But the the funniest thing happens when you just decide to enter a competition. Like I said, it doesn't doesn't need to be a Depticon. There's a ton more around the country at conventions and tournaments at, at local stores. But the thing happens when you decide you're going to enter that is that all of a sudden you just you, you don't accept your shortcuts anymore right you really work to take everything up to the next level and it makes you reach out try new techniques learn new stuff that's really highly valuable i mentioned the comedy like that's just you know fun diorama stuff like jesus you don't need those you gotta run from that boulder great um that's incredibly valuable because it's something that can be that kind of pressure uh, will honestly help you up your game in a quicker path. And then hopefully, in fact, if it's a smaller competition, it might even because then you can get direct feedback from the judges, right? You know, and, and if you get a chance to do that, do that. Talk to them about why they rated you, you know, how they did. Um, if that's possible. Always take that opportunity because there is just nothing better. Uh, I recently had a conversation, just a quick aside, I recently had a conversation with somebody about monochrome painting and how hard it is. Um, that is not black and white out. Obviously, that's, you know, that's a fantastic example of monochrome painting. And it is a really, really hard technique. To paint that hard. So, full kudos there. But as I was saying, uh, you know, just get into it is my point. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the judgment or not winning. You don't you don't go to these competitions necessarily to win every time. In that case, without saying. But it's not like you can't gain a great deal from it, even if you okay, because the simple act of participation makes you up about what you're doing with your unit when you see uh, all the other models there, when you get inspired by all the other people who also, right? Um, those sorts of things alone, even even if you didn't end up entering, I think, if you had it in your head the whole time you were painting that this is a competition piece, I think that help you uh, to, to push your game farther. Okay. Um, but what I would say is certainly do enter it. And don't worry about judging. That's all silly, okay? Because none of that matters, right? The only way you really, really improve is by pushing yourself. And there are many ways to do that, not just competition. Um, but that act of pushing yourself, you know, like having something that you're building toward that goal. In the same way that I think a lot of people get armies done when they've got a tournament coming, right? Because it's like, oh, I've got to have it painted for the tournament. Well, it's the same the same sort of motive. Um, uh, another slide aside here on this one. Somebody had recently asked me about warm and cold and the combination. Uh, excellent example of warm and cold combination there in the last one. Right? So uh, a good habit to be in, to be trying different things, to be pushing yourself, to be doing these things, and that's exactly what that's exactly what competition does, and for obvious reasons. The same way that you go to a tournament and you, you know, you play tough games and tough opponents, 
become a better tournament player. Uh, the same way that playing in, uh, or, or you know, sorry, participating in a painting competition makes you a better. Uh, very fun dynamic base on that one. I uh, love that Infinity model. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like I love the base model. I've seen a lot of people do amazing things with this one. This girl is so such a sweet model. So we're coming to the end of the show. There's, um, but we're getting to the end of these slides. Uh, so what I would say is I'll, I'll I'll jump back in here very quickly. On, uh, tomorrow or that is a I don't know when you're watching this. So let me do it this way. Um, go to the Crystal Brush link below, uh, which will take you to the cool menu. You're not voting. You can vote on all the pictures that they put up. There's, like I said, you're going to see more minis that you didn't see here. More amazing work from more amazing artists that are just delivering the top of the game worldwide here. And, uh, you know, vote on that stuff. Uh, and like I said, that'll be down there. Uh, you do have to register with cool mini or not. Go do that because uh, you have to be logged in for your vote to count. Uh, this one in particular, I wanted to take a moment on because it has a diorama. Stunning. Um, again, I that Star Wars New Hope banner is painted, by the way. So, like the thing above the Coca Cola machine, they, that's freehand. Uh, yeah, I mean, really really with this thing when i say top of the game on these dioramas i mean it <laughs> things like this are awe-inspiring and there are many pieces like this uh in in this competition it's, it's watch so many great painters come together and do such incredible work how many more do we have i thought i thought i was closer to the end i should have counted my slides but i got a lot so many great examples of freehand, of creative facing, of unusual miniatures. Um, just, you know, fun things like the walrus and, and like the, this mech guy over here on the left. Just like figs and lines I don't recognize. But I'm uh, just because every time it's it's a little bit of a revelation. I'm like, huh, what is that? And I got to like, you know, I go and dig into it a little more just to see. Like, oh, wow, my God, I would love to paint that, or I would love to use that fig, or something like that. Down to the very end here, uh, we just have a few miniatures left, and uh, they are certainly some of my favorites. Uh, we've got some amazing stuff. So let's go ahead. Everyone. Obviously, like I said, when it comes to the big diorama game or the big large figure category and stuff like that, you're going to see just some of the most amazing models. Uh, in the world, right here at Adepticon. If you have any love of, uh, you know, war games in general, but model hobbying, painting in specific, uh, I'll get you all here. Uh, it really is just uh, beyond impressive. Uh, what you get to see, what you get to participate in, the people you get to talk to. Uh, if you're looking to up your hobby game, uh, because some of the best work I've ever seen is here. All right, so once again, don't forget, uh, link is down at the bottom. Uh, it should be active, I think, tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably just link to the post that it will have the eventual link on it. There'll be a banner ad from that. Um, I'll link just straight to the Crystal Brush right now. Uh, but uh, there you go. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you loved all these amazing miniatures. Um, obviously, I want to thank and credit all of these unbelievable artists. I can't tell you who they are because I don't know who they are because all this is anonymous. But to all of those people who participated and, and, and who crafted these amazing works of art, every single one of them, every single one of these people should be very, very proud of everything that they did. And uh, it's, it's just really incredible uh, and inspiring to look at everyone's stuff. So. Thank you very much, everybody, and as always, we'll see you next time.